now the form so that you can nominate participants for this conference. So you can suggest people that should be there. Um, we really want to uh, a diverse uh, crowd with a lot of skills. Um, from that, those selections, we will handpick. Uh, we will also uh, handpick certain relevant stakeholders, like people who can actually decide on budget, for instance. Um, and the timeline is there will soon be a, an e uh, email announcement, um, like next week, within this next week, um, tomorrow. or tomorrow. Um, then later we will be sending out a nomination form where you can make these nominations. Um, latest uh, May 25th, and the deadline for nominations will be June 8th. So before that, if ding, you want ding, to be ding, there, ding, 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 ding. that's the date. So get your nominations in. You only have two weeks to do it. I know people are doing vacations, but sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Next is the documentation sprint group with uh, Leah, uh, Nick, and Jens. This microphone works, and you can click the links, yeah, show okay, them on the sure. screen. All right. So um, yeah, we've been running the documentation corner, um, and a lot of people did several stuff. I'm gonna present a few of them. So um, we've been working on the documentation about how to install and set up Wikibay. So I have nothing to show you about this. It's been mostly discussions about how to prepare the like. Uh, revamping the, 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 the existing documentation about that. Um, Jens has been writing a very cool blog post um, in the direction of the Wikipedians so they can understand better Wikidata and how to uh, watch, monitor what's happening on Wikidata from Wikipedia. Uh, the blog post is not published yet but will be very soon both in German and English. Um, I've been working a bit on the um, user documentation for lexicographical data, uh, which, as you may know, will be uh, deployed next week. So how to edit and modify all this new um, entity type that we're going to have in Wikidata. Um, and then someone uh, also made some um, help document updates on Wikitech. I'm not going to open all the links. You can have a look yourself. Um, yeah, about two Ford and this kind of things. That's it. Thank you for to everyone who documented their projects. Thank you. <laughs> then we have the mobile translation prototype by Pau Giner. Hello everyone, I'm, uh, I have been working with the language team of the Wikimedia Foundation on content translation for, for a long while, uh, allowing people to translate Wikipedia articles, but that was designed for desktop. So I was exploring in a very basic prototype how that could work on a mobile environment. And this is the prototype. The basic idea is that instead of working on a paragraph by paragraph basis, you would work on a sentence by sentence basis. So you will have a proposed translation at the bottom that if you're not happy with, you can you can edit it. And if you are happy with the proposed translations, you can keep applying them if they work for you. So that the paragraph keeps being translated. And also if, if there is, um, th there is a long text that you are translating from, um, we want to still keep space for the source text so that you can you can swipe through through it as you are translating and we have obviously here some space for for the keyboard once you complete everything you are encouraged to um, to proofread the paragraph and marking it as as proofread there are still more details to to be iterated we want to use this to test with users and get feedback to see which interaction patterns work or not in a mobile device to translate articles. That's it. Thanks. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Next is Monty. Yep. Hi, I'm Monty. 
Um, let's see, so let me bring up the screenshot. Uh, so when developing for the Wikipedia app, it can be a pain to switch device languages so you can see and proof native interface elements uh, using actual localized strings. And so I worked a bit on an automation script which is presently capturing about uh, roughly a, a couple dozen apps interfaces in a dozen different languages and five different device types. And so it ends up being about a total of 1,500 uh, screenshots. It takes about an hour or two to run. But the goal is to just to improve the quality of non-English versions of the Wikipedia app. And so we hope to maybe run this like once a night and expand the number of interfaces that it's capturing. I'd like to actually get every single one in there captured. And yeah, just make it easier to fix these issues before things actually uh, ship. So what you see on screen here is just one device. So it's like the iPhone 5S and how those interfaces look. But it also captures for like tablets and things like that. So yeah, and the tool gives us a nice little web page that we can just go and look at. Uh, that's about it. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we have the map infographic tool by Ryan, Ryan Caldari. Um, can you open both those yep. links? I can. Hello, everybody. OK, so I basically just created this tool because um, I like to create infographics. And they're really tedious to make. I mean, you basically like have to open up an SVG and change all the colors and all this. Um, but it, you know, it's, it's not hard enough that uh, it actually takes a ton of time, but it's hard enough that I don't want to do it very often. But I was like, wow, this could just be automated with a little tool and made really easy and fun. So I built a little tool on Tool Labs. Um, and it's basically just like an interactive map coloring book. Like you just choose a color and you start coloring states. And you can, you know, be like, okay, these are the states where, you know, some law is enacted or something. Or if you wanted to do like something based on like percentages, you can switch to a gradient color palette and be like, okay, the dark green ones are the ones that have the highest, you know, pay rate in for women or something like that. Um, and then, color them in however you want. Um, you can, it also has a nice little feature here where you can uh, also show all the territories. And if you uh, want to assert that Puerto Rico is, in fact, part of the United States. Um, and then once you're done with that and you have all your states colored in exactly how you want, then you just click Download SVG, and you have your SVG to upload to Commons. So that's it. Thank you. Then we go to expanding stop articles using content translation by Santosh. Hello. OK. Content translation is to create new articles using translation. But one of the often requested features is to expand an existing article, especially when it is as I say, a stub article. Stub article is basically small articles, maybe with one line or one paragraph. Uh, but without uh, losing that content, how to create that article a better one? So I created a screencast just in case. OK, here you have an article. It says it's already exists, but it's a stub article. So you start translation, and it gets loaded in the editor. But on the top, the stub content is presented. You see it on the right side. It, the, that's a stub article, existing article. So that's a visual editor. You can change it if you want. But you can also um, copy that or cut that and paste it here. So you are using the content. And if you are done, then you are done. So you can expand the article like that. Thank you. Thank you. And I think now we get episode four or five in Amir's series about translation using Telegram. Hi. Um, I actually have very short time, so I'm not going to speak about that. I'm going to speak about something else. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> no, very short time, uh, and uh, a lot of you already saw that thing. Now, what I'm going to speak about uh, was done by these nice people who unfortunately had already to leave on the flight. Uh, but uh, how many of you uh, know what Translate Wiki is? Quite a lot. How many of you actually translate stuff using Translate Wiki? Okay, quite a few. So um, uh, I have to log in. Uh, just a second. Okay, so um, for many years we have had a, a watch list um, in MediaWiki, so you can watch pages and um, have some kind of notification when the page that interests you changes. In Translate Wiki, we didn't have anything like that, uh, but now we do. Uh, so uh, we have this little star here next to the project that you're translating. So if, for example, you care about a certain extension and you translate it often and you want it to be complete, so when there are new strings to translate in this extension, you will be able to get notification. So there's this little star uh, which looks just like the watch list star and it, uh, it's right here and you can watch and unwatch and uh, that's about it. And it was, done, it was done by these nice people that I showed you uh, and that's it, thank you. Oh. Okay. More surprises. Um, Jupyter Notebook with a list of um, Wikimedia gadgets by James Hare. Yes. <laughs> we will do that. There we go. And you should be about there. Hello everyone. So, if you are not aware, one of the things we offer to our volunteer developers is something called PAWS, P-A-W-S. And if you're not familiar with what a Jupyter Notebook is, it is our Jupyter Notebook as a service. Write code in the browser. You have your choice of Python and R. You can you're share nice. stuff with your friends. It's great, but that's not what I'm gonna be showing off today. What I'm gonna be showing off is one of the notebooks I've created. And gadgets are pieces of JavaScript that you can uh, run on the Wikimedia projects to do little things that help like augment the interface a little bit. I'm not showing those either. I'm showing a notebook I created, creating a list of every gadget on every Wikimedia project. So this is my code that I wrote. Uh, there's a lot of verbose output here. Uh, here's the list. So for example, basically what I did is if a gadget has the same name across the different wikis, I collated them together. And so there is a gadget out there called CSS tab. I have no idea what it does, but apparently it's deployed on, um, can anyone tell me what language PS is? Pashto, and Pashto, Yiddish, and yes, Pashto and Yiddish have this thing called CSS tab. And we know this because I've created this list of every gadget. Thank you. Okay, next is uh, Aaron Halfacker uh, about uh, gadgets to inspire the use of RS. Hey folks, so I, I've miraculously <laughs> covered from my injuries, actually not really, um, but I'm feeling much better. Uh, thank you, that's, that's wonderful help. Um, so today I'm gonna show you how easy it is to program something with ORS. So let's see how fast I can type when I haven't been using my left hand very much for a few days. Uh, and while I'm uh, logging in here, who has, who's an admin or a uh, uh, bureaucrat? Uh, who's an admin or a bureaucrat and has not enabled two-factor authentication? <laughs> I'm not even gonna look up. You know who you are. <laughs> All right. Nobody look. <laughs> Okay, all right. So I have a few gadgets that I've developed that I wanna show you. They're very tiny and they use ours to do some cool things. So actually, let me, let me uh, first start with, oh, middle click doesn't work. Does control click work? No. Oh yeah, just click, there we go. Um, okay, so first I wanna show you this little thing that appears at the top of the page here. Uh, what this is doing is it's telling you that ORS thinks that this page is about entertainment and maybe about visual arts. Uh, given that it's about a comic, I think it's hitting the nail on the head. Let's try another random article. 
So let's see, here we have uh, Mojavia, which is a genus of moths. So geosciences, definitely biology, maybe Oceania, uh, something about countries. Um, this is our new topic model. We're just deploying this uh, right now, and it's going to be really useful for routing new page creations to people who have some subject interest in reviewing them. Um, and I just want to show you the code to do this is less than 30 lines long. Um, yeah, it's very, very tiny. So it's really, really easy to build tools based on top of ORs. Like, seriously, go check this out. One more tool. This one's about 35 lines long, and this one runs on top of Wikidata. So I'm going to do a random item here. And if we wait for just a moment, here we go. So what this is doing is it's loading up our item quality prediction on top of an item in Wikidata. And so this predicts that this item is about D class, this little progress bar that's kind of hideous. I'm sorry, OOJS just doesn't render well by default sometimes. Um, let's see, let's try one more. Let's see, this, this one, uh, not very much content here at all. That's a D class. Come on, let's get a good quality one. Uh, let's try, let's try uh, Q42. Uh, we'll get something good out of Q42. There we go, A class. All right. Enable your two-factor authentication. Thank you, Aaron. Um, we, we continue with uh, David and Rowan on uh, import an article into special collab paths and Google Docs style collaborative editing. Oops. This okay. one also works. You want to talk for 30 seconds while I'm putting the tabs up? Uh, sure. Uh, I didn't think I was going to be presenting, but okay. Uh, so we're. Oh, no, where's the call on? We're presenting uh, Ed's work. Ed had to leave early, so he's not here to present his own work, but we will do our best uh, to present what he made. That's localhost, David. It's not Troy.org. Oh, you need to. Yeah. Um, so uh, we have been working on uh, for a while on an Etherpad-like real-time editing feature in Visual Editor. Um, and that was previously just a standalone thing. We've demoed it at uh, last year's hackathon. What Ed made at this hackathon is a way to import um, a wiki page into uh, that editor so that you can uh, work together on an article with your friends. Um, and then once we build export functionality, you'll even be able to save what you wrote. Uh, so David is going to um, import probably the main page into yeah, this thing? I just type into here and it, it'll search through my pages. And, okay, here's a, here's a page I made earlier, and then I click Import. Um, so what it's done here is it's created a random document um, in the um, collaboration space, and, it, and then it's pulled the article into there. So I can, I can now edit in here, and this is a collaborative session. I can share the uh, URL with somebody else um, who lives on the other side of the screen. Um, and hopefully they'll be in the same universe. Otherwise, yeah, here we are. You can can you see their cursor? <laughs> Over there. Yeah, and then when you finished, you could uh, uh, copy and paste to export. We haven't got an automatic button to publish it because that would be naughty. <laughs> but yeah, copy and pasting into another visual editor works. It's kind of clunky, but it works. Awesome. That's Thank exciting. You. Thank you. Um, I think we have Nicole on the movement strategy and the technology working group. You need the computer? Yes. I have linked, uh, David messed everything up. <laughs> Just click on the Google this one? presentation, yes, please. Excellent. Okay, it doesn't matter. I do it like this. So, um, I was here to talk about the movement strategy process and the movement, the technology working group, and we did a session, a very nice session on Friday uh, afternoon about this, and created a lot of sticky notes and to-dos and. Uh, 
wanted to answer the question, what are the high-level questions that these wor this working group will be tackling, who should actually be in the group, and um, how should the, uh, the group work and operate. And this was a collection of all these inputs that I gathered throughout the, the session, and then I put up a, a, a strategy, a magic strategy wall, uh, um, and, and uh, gra grab people in to work with me on the different tasks that we um, that we came up with in the session, and then we provided some candies and socks and stickers, and did some magic. And then this uh, this is what came came out of all of the conversations. We clustered the 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 words and the the topics that we um, that we heard most about in this, these sessions, and. Um, got also some answers to the question, but so the overall who should be in the group, so the group should be connecting and doing outreach to the to the constituency, constituents from all over the movement and also beyond, so from each corner of the movement. Um, they co should collect advice and needs and aspirations and visions of the movement via different channels, not only on Wiki, and they should focus on the developer ecosystem, decision making and platform evolution and the platform architecture principles, they can serve as a starting point for questions that this working group can provide advice on. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> Next is someone whose name I cannot make out from his username, but okay. it's about wiki provenance. It's about wiki provenance? Or I just... Okay, so you I are not J. Sam Wrights. Okay. So I'm just a person that's just after, sorry. Okay. But careful. <laughs> I could just maybe pass right now. Yep, so you're in number 13 then. Yes. Module data box. Okay, we'll do that first. Perfect. Yes. So with Tobias, we made a surfer challenge how to build an inf uh, Lua module that generates info boxes based on Wikidata with as less code as possible and with basically no required configuration. And that also works with uh, basically all types. And so we wrote something like 200 lines of codes. Um, so just this, and it gave us this kind of info boxes with the image, the types, a lot of data, nicely sorted, and map. So I think it's very nice to show that it's easy for even small Wikipedias to build uh, info boxes based on Wikidata with a lot of information. Also, I also worked on uh, making RDF output for Exims in order to be able to do Sparkle query with them. And with Tobias, we also worked on making Rust work well with Wikibase by creating a Wikibase Rust client. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please, go to, please go up there because we don't have st steps here. Here you go. Okay, so this is a tool for the Wikidata contributors. So what exactly it is doing is we have, to, like if you're a new contributor to Wikidata, the new questions that you would be asking, how can I contribute to Wikidata? And this is a regular question, and if you uh, see the community on the project chat page, there are, these questions are often asked. So what I am trying to uh, propose here is, like, if you're a new contributor, you could start with languages, translating the languages. So let's take a simple translation statistics. I hope it uh, gets me the data. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So here you are. Here you have the statistics of the translation in Wikidata currently. So you have English followed by Arabic followed by Ukrainian. So English has 4,640 translations followed by Arabic and then Ukrainian. But then you can also see there are languages like ARJ. I mean, do not know the code for them. So you could see that not many translations. So if you want to translate, you could start this point. Then the next question that you would ask, how, how many properties are there right now? So I will say, OK, this is the 4,641, and then if you want to see, okay, I would like to translate some particular properties of PT15, you could get the complete translation statistics, like you have total 266, three languages that have not, that do not have any labels, okay? 
Next, that something that you could do is you do not know how many data types. Can I try to navigate by the data types? So you have 13 data types, and you could get navigate to each of them. Then uh, next thing is that if you want to do, how can I describe a particular uh, entity? For example, I wanted to describe a heritage building or a software or a programming language. So I could do, OK, let's see. OK, data is coming. <laughs> yeah. OK, totally, there are 75 properties. So you could use any of these properties to say, OK, I, I, I know this, how to do it. I don't know how to do this, but let's try that. Uh, the details in this particular uh, uh, search property. Finally, one more up. thing, the translated templates, if you want our discussion, these are only translated in 52 languages, but you could improve them in other 250 languages. I think that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> OK, now I kind of have lost track of who we're having next, but it's you. That's fine. But what are you presenting about? Context Club. Context Club. Okay, go ahead. Uh, hey, hi. Uh, so recently, Reading Web team uh, in the foundation uh, released a feature called Page Previews on Wikipedia. Let's add the, uh, on Wikipedia, and one of the things that uh, we have been exploring is how can page previews be used outside Wikipedia. Uh, I want to hand it over to Joaquin to talk about technical parts of it. So what we did is take the code from extension pop-ups and the front-end code and did some work for uh, making it independent of MediaWiki and jQuery to try to make the bundle small. So right now it's just ready for the prototype. There's some things to change, like adding licensing information, but it's mostly good. And basically, you just add a URL from a CDN. This is one CDN. It's published on NPM as context cards. And then you mark your HTML with data wiki lang and data wiki title, and it will just show the same previews that you have on Wikipedia. Um, so Nizar will go through the case studies that we made. Uh, yeah, so one of the things that we've been uh, exploring is what are, the, what are the kind of audiences that might use this, and we've been getting a lot of interest from other publishers uh, and news sources that can use uh, page previews for their reading. So we kind of uh, put a few examples right here. Uh, so Let's say we are reading about otters, uh, and there is a term which is kind of technical biological term. Uh, the editor of this page can use page previews to sort of give context for it. Uh, so if you hover over it, you get exact preview from Wikipedia, which is uh, updated live. So if you actually edit Wikipedia article, it will show up on BBC right away. Uh, we kind of created a couple of more uh, to sort of just give idea about how can this be used. Uh, yeah, who's man Ray? I don't know. Uh, visual artist. Uh, there you go. Cool. Hold on. Check it out. It's on context cards. There's a URL. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Let me just. Um go. Let me just open all my things here. I didn't want to make slides, and I couldn't use my own laptop, so instead I just made a bunch of images. Here we go. These are all screenshots. So on recent changes uh, on uh, a number of wikis now, we have these Auras-powered filters uh, for contribution quality and good faith. And so these filters are called things like very likely good and may have problems and such things. Um, but what does that mean? If you, if, you know, if it may have problems, what percentage of the things that it finds actually have problems? What percentage of the things that have problems does it find? Um, these are pretty difficult things to find out. Uh, the way that I previously found this out is so, you know, you you um, you have these different filters that um, uh, that span different uh, probability ranges with different amounts of edits that are covered by them and not, and different amounts of edits that they find. But how do you find out what these percentages are? So uh, there is an API for that, which, as you can see, is uh, super usable and super intuitive, and an end user would totally use. Um, I um, previously had this uh, script that I hacked up in JSBin. And if you look at the URL, this is actually version 39 of my script. Um, it generates uh, like this TSV output over here that's tab separated, which I then paste into this giant spreadsheet. And I use it to handpick 
which uh, which levels I'm going to use to assign these filters, and then I forget about it, and the spreadsheet gets out of date. Um, that's all terrible. So I made a special page that looks like this, that just gives you a table of for each filter. Um, what is the precision, meaning what percentage of the edits that it finds are actually bad or good or whatever, and what is the recall, meaning of all the good edits, what percentage does it find? So this tells me that on English Wikipedia, if I select likely have problems, then 45.2% of the edits that it will find will in fact have problems, and it will find 43.7% of all the problematic edits. And this is information that was previously very hard to get um, reliably even for us, let alone for users. Now it's here in the special page. Uh, we should probably work on like integrating a little bit more in the interface uh, instead of just outputting this table, but this is a start. Thank you, Ron. All right, then we get um, Niharika. That doesn't count. It does. Everybody, close your laptops. <laughs> All right. What? No. Okay, so I made this uh, clever little user script that talks to an API that talks to the Google API for uh, doing some basic image recognition and label suggestion for Commons images. So let me see if I can. Uh, no, no. Oh, yeah, shift seven. Okay, so, yeah. For example, this one's pretty simple. So it knows it's a cat with mammal, small, medium size. It suggests them categories. This one was easy. Uh, this is a little tricky. Uh, you can see the suit. So parachuting stream sport, it also knows it's a paratrooper, which is more clever. Uh, this one, it's a little more tricky again because of the headgear. It knows it's a gas mask, helmet, something. Uh, all right, so yeah, it can, it can do uh, more interesting ones, but it also gets some pretty wrong. So like this one is the flying skeleton from Hill but it thinks it's the sky at sunrise. So yeah, you can, you can check out the others yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Next is a review of recently uploaded images with the, the Wikimedia Commons Android app by Elias, Ness, and Wim. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. As we talked, we added peer review. Uh, thanks to Yusuke and Elliot, successfully we made it. And are you able to see? Okay. And it's a part of the gamification of our app. For example, this is a photo from beta server. And if you think it's out of context, you can report for nomination. 
and you can write something. Yeah, I made several typos. Yes, when you nominate it for deletion, you can see it actually works from the recent changes. Yes, see, I am nominated something for deletion. And then, okay, if it is not out of scope, you can just get another image randomly. And if it's not out of, out of scope, yes. And, uh, it can be a copyright violation, and you can also report this one. And it will give you another picture to play. Yes, see here. And lastly, yes, we, we were planning to offer some categories for non-categorized pictures, but it's not uh, applied yet. And you can send thank, thanks to the contributor, and you will see, actually, we thank to the contributor. Yeah, here. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Kim uh, reporting on the progress on the Wikimedia developer support. Okay, uh, where am I? I don't. Do you just want to speak? Should I open some URLs? Where, where am I? I'm not... Yeah, we have to go lower. Okay. No. Okay, yes. That's... It op opens in a new window automatically. Okay. So this one, it's a bit of kind of cheating because uh, most of the work was done before the hackathon. But uh, anyway, uh, it's good that I cannot log in because this is actually about not being logged in, not, being, not having an account. Uh, this is the Wikimedia developer support. It's a pilot. We are, you are all invited to, to, to join if you have questions or you can help other, de other developers. And we, had, uh, we started the pilot with local account creation, which is not nice. And after some discussions and, and some work, uh, now we have, uh, well, GitHub. Uh, you can log in through your GitHub account if you have one, which already comes with this course. But you can also uh, have an account through your Wikimedia Fabricator account. This work was done by uh, a student, uh, a volunteer. Uh, let me just get this right, Jana Agun. And uh, we have been using this, we have tested it, and well, this weekend we decided to just remove uh, local, local registrations, so now Wikimedia Fabricator it is. Um, we also have enabled email replies, and we, so you can basically uh, reply to a topic from your, from your email. Uh, testing email is complicated, many clients, mobile, etc. so please mm, participate, help us testing this. And this morning we had a, a uh, Bob session, and well, we had an interesting discussion, and we agreed that next steps should be uh, focus on more adoption. This is why I'm here pitching this space for all of you. More visibility, so for instance, having templates in relevant media wiki or pages. Uh, we are going to try this uh, plugin to connect with Matrix IRC uh, chat rooms and talk with the support desk, support desk people uh, to see if they want to completely move over here. And well, by the way, define success criteria to the pilot because when we started the pilot, we forgot to uh, define success criteria. Uh, you are all invited to participate, and thank you. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> Next is uh, Lingua Libre. You can sit and use this microphone or use a. Yep. So hi, I'm Antoine. Uh, I will present to you the progress that we made on Lingua Libre this weekend. So Lingua Libre is a tool to uh, record words uh, in uh, every language. So yet you can connect uh, with your uh, Wikimedia account. So turn your head. 
Uh, that's it. So yeah, the work we uh, we have done this uh, this weekend is also mainly about supporting uh, more languages that we do before. So yet uh, we support basically every language that have a Wikidata ID. So when you're connected, you can connect, uh, you can access to the recording tool. So I don't think we have a microphone in this PC, but we'll just do as if it has. You create a, um, a profile for the speaker. So basically, all what you see are uh, Wikidata, extra text from Wikidata, our item from Wikidata. Then you select a list of words that we want to record. So for example, French fruits. And then you just have uh, to speak, uh, to read the list uh, that appear, and the software will uh, automatically cut the words uh, into separate files, upload them on commands, and put the good description on it. And so they are just ready to use it on uh, other Wikimedia projects like uh, Wikipedia or Wiktionary. And behind uh, Lindra Libre is a MediaWiki uh, instance with a Wikibase. So for each uh, record we have, we have a wiki-based item, and we can uh, be queried uh, with uh, wiki data with a federated request, and that's pretty cool. Thanks. Thank you. That's an awesome feature. Okay, I think we start the experimental part of the showcase now, but because this is when people that requested to use their own computer come on stage. Um, so we have David Barrett, I think, first. Mm, uh, sorry, historical social network connection to the Wikipedia, yes. And that would still use the laptop provided. I was getting ahead of myself. Okay, hello. Hello. So, um, the university here is involved in a project which is uh, recovering data from people. Um, sorry. Okay, they are recovering um, historical context from um, people and census from all over the um, Catalonian cities, and they are building a search engine. So, um, we wanted to make a link to the Wikipedia and have these people search in the Wikipedia and also historical context, so we can have more information about them. Um, this is a design implementation that they wanted to build. At the right, you can see these rich links. Um, and we are also building an app using the Ionic framework. This was a design that uh, was uh, tested here. And that's, that's the actual implementation which uh, was done using an NPM package. Uh, from Maxim, which is also here. And um, we are also using the Star Wars API right now because we don't have access to the real API, but that's more or less how it will look like. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now it's David with uh, Composer CLI support. Okay. Good luck. Oh, thanks. I'm going to try to share my screen. And otherwise, I'll pantomime this. Oh, that's smart. Well, okay. Oh, well, that's not too bad. So, um, uh, we're going to create a project here. Kudos for that solution. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this was an empty folder while this is doing this. It just has the local settings in it that we're going to copy in. Oops, sorry. Um, ding, 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 ding. But while that's waiting, I'll explain what it's doing. It's cloning my repository, which will be moved to Garrett eventually. Um, and um, then it's doing a composer install, and it's installing all of the dependencies of MediaWiki. And now it's installing MediaWiki itself. 
And finally, it's going to apply a patch so that way the autoloader works. <laughs> okay. Um, and now we're going to uh, install, we, we need a skin, obviously. So, oops, if I could spell. Uh, MediaWiki vector skin, MediaWiki slash, we'll install boost filter while we're at it, and we'll install pair mailer. And um, I use a boost filter, eh. it would help if I could, you know, type right. <laughs> Media wiki. I actually don't know where I made it this time. Um, oh, whatever. Um, <laughs> oh, it's because I didn't CD into it. Sorry, I didn't CD into my new project. Your time is almost up. No. Um, but anyways, I use abuse filter as a as an example because it also has the dependencies. So it's going to install. Uh, abuse filter, vector, and those dependencies, and then it all works if I could do it right, but that's okay. This is nice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, Peter with um, support for extensions in JavaScript in Huddle. Oh, I got a video. Uh, hello, I, I'm Peter. So I'm working on Huggle, which is a uh, uh, MediaWiki diff browser used for patrolling on on uh, MediaWiki wikis, mostly on English Wikipedia. So um, how do I start the video here? Hmm. Oh, here we go. So can you see it? Is it big enough? I hope so. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I won't show you Huggle because I don't have enough time, but I will show you what I did here. So uh, if we start Huggle, um, is a video still? Wait. Yeah. So, so there's this menu scripting which wasn't here before the hackathon. It's a new thing, and I basically implemented um, possibility to extend Huggle and its interface using uh, JavaScript extensions. It's using Google uh, Google um, V8 engine, and uh, you can see uh, here. I will. Uh, this is like a, a scripting man manager where you can see load extensions, and I will show you how. We load a new extension which will alter the interface, and it's called Hello World. So uh, if we load the extension, we can see that there's a new extension here. You can see the outer version. It's working description for the extension, the path. And uh, I will show you that now the menu scripting is a little bit different. There's a new item here called Do It. And if you press it, there's going to be something. It will say Hello World. So. Uh, we basically changed the Huggle interface using JavaScript extension. Uh, if you want to see more about Huggle, you can just open the wiki page, uh, wiki, uh, Wikipedia colon Huggle. And uh, I will also show you how the source code, source code of the extension looks. It's uh, just JavaScript. So now anybody can make modifications to Huggle without uh, need to know C++. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. Um, yes, ah, okay. Uh, you cannot use your own computer? Uh, okay. So, hi. Um, what are you looking for? Yeah. I'm uh, Mauton from Benin. Just let me present you Benin. Benin is a country in West Af of Africa. He's near to, to Nigeria. And in Benin, we have uh, about uh, 10 million uh, inhabitants. Uh, many languages are spoken in, in Benin. Uh, among them, you have uh, Fon. Fon that is uh, spoken by more than 4 million people. But there is no wiki in, uh, in that language. That's why I decided to create one. You know, <laughs> thank you. in foreign language, there, there are some uh, special letters. So I just asked myself how we can, we can tap that. 
and I'll build a, a, a virtual keyboard for that, uh, so that we can uh, type uh, those special characters. Let me uh, show you a demo of, of it. So you can see, then you can you can write the special character from foreign language using uh, this. That is a uh, um, translate wiki. So I started uh, translating uh, the messages of uh, from, from Wikipedia. This is a logo for me. Thank you, Oda. Thank you. Yep. Oh. Next step is uh, to gather a community uh, for that and uh, so that we can start translating and uh, editing articles. Thank you so much, uh, Ami uh, Eti, for, for your help, and uh, thank you, Santosh. Thank you all. Now we have uh, Jean Fret, obviously. Indeed, with the worst slides I've ever done in my life. Okay, Beautiful. so if you're like me and you develop a tool to, to be made on ToolForge, you really like to test it locally um, because it's just better. And <clears throat> there's the moment where you need, the, imagine your tool hits the database of wiki replicas that we have on ToolForge, and you hit this moment like, oh, of course, locally, I cannot use comment.wiki, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, hmm, that's really annoying, but that means that I need to test in production, and I obviously don't like that. So locally, I always use Docker containers and Docker Compose for my environments, and I thought, hmm, maybe I can use that to simplify the uh, setup. So can you read that kind of bit, or not really? Anyhow, so first stage would be, oh, I can just like put in a empty uh, MySQL container, and that's slightly better because it doesn't crash connecting the database, but it crashes because, of course, it doesn't know the tables. I was like, oh, maybe I can just have a container that just has the uh, MediaWiki schema. And so if you pull this image, jean fred slash mediawiki dash core dash blank dash db, uh, you will have an empty MediaWiki conform schema where, so that tool just displays some images after a query. Uh, it's not really important. And here, it doesn't crash anymore. It displays there are no images. So that's first step. As, and then I was talking to Brian Davis, and he was telling me, oh, you know you can proxy uh, through ToolForge, make an SSH tunnel to, to query the live data. I was like, that sounds cool. So now, if you use this uh, jean fred slash wiki replicas proxy uh, Docker image, you just mount your SSH off stock because you all trust me, and that's all going to be fine. I uh, won't do anything with your credentials. SSH user, up, choose your table. And ta-da, this is local, and it displays the images that you just queried. Uh, this is not doctored. It's a genuine screenshot. And because <laughs> a picture is worth, uh, so these are the um, uh, links for anything, and the picture is worth a 1,000 words. So to summarize this uh, presentation, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we have uh, Moriel. Hi. Hello. So I need to log in, hang on. We have collected a nice collection of usernames yes. and passwords today. So I'm changing my password <laughs> right after this. <laughs> what did you say, Aaron? Enable two-factor? Aha, enable two-factor, two that's it, yeah, okay. Aaron says to enable two-factor. Okay, so, um, oh, I don't understand the language here. Sorry. Uh, okay. You're good. I forgot to start the clock. Oh, excellent. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'll start with, um, so on English Wiki, uh, there is a, where's the slash here? Shift what is going on? <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> sorry. So on English Wikipedia, there is this tool uh, that allows you to create a new page uh, based on uh, templates. And it's really, really cool. And some wikis, like Hebrew Wiki and Arabic Wiki, asked that I take a look at uh, bringing it over to them. The problem is that this is really localized and very much a, uh, it's, it's just a, uh, a, a big collection of templates. And it started getting, very, very difficult to 
import them over um, and do that at scale so that we can do that not just to two wikis but then to all wikis. Uh, so instead, um, I created a uh, gadget um, or rather a user script it, um, called Article Helper. Uh, so you open it up and it shows you know, an introductory text. That text is in the wiki which you can edit so the wiki itself can edit that and add whatever they want. Um, and then the wiki itself can also create their own articles um, with kind of like the categories and article structure. So let's say I want to edit, I don't know, I want to write about a cat. Um, it's going to show me that it's going to look more or less like this. Um, what do I want? I don't know. Uh, I can't spell Cheshire, so I'll just write small cat. <laughs> okay. Um, but just for technical stuff, so where's the... Where's the pipe? Uh, I don't know. I, I use a Mac. What? Oh, God. Okay, I, I, I wanted to like impress you all and show you that it will tell you when the, the, it's not legal, but I can't make it not legal, so just trust me on this. What? What? Alt, alt, alt GR. There you go. This is illegal. <laughs> um, anyway, so okay, small cat. I'm going to create the article. Uh, it opens it up in my sandbox. This is also configurable, so each wiki can decide where this is opening. It can be also in the draft space. Uh, it's opening it up, and it's repopulated with, um, you know, uh, something for me to start. So it's very similar to what is already existing in English Wiki with uh, 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 Sandbox Plus, uh, the template, um, except this is a uh, user script. You can basically port it to any of your wikis, and with uh, two or three configuration options, you can set it up for your wiki. Uh, Thank you, Muriel. Thanks. Next is uh, Dimitri, towards easier editing uh, from mobile devices. Hey everyone, one second, I promised John Robson to start downloading his presentation. It's downloading. Okay. Let's try this. Oh no. because of the download? Who's downloading movies? Oh. In New Seattle, of course, sorry. Okay, here we go. So uh, we all know that editing from mobile is kind of minimal. It's kind of rudimentary at the moment. And that's something we're going to be working on more in the near future. But um, for now, I thought I'd push things forward just a little bit, like infinitesimally. So here's what I did. So you know how when you start editing, inside any edit field on your device, you get your virtual keyboard at the bottom. And uh, if you're a multilingual user, you can switch between different languages for your keyboard. But I also found that you can do some customizations and custom keyboards all together. So I give you the Wikitext keyboard. So this is a... <laughs> This is an actual system level keyboard that gets installed. And wherever you have an edit field in any app, you can now insert Wikitext <laughs> syntax. <laughs> so yeah, you can highlight words. You can insert syntax around them, make them links. Um, if you put your cursor onto a link, you can preview that link. You can also do things like preview the actual wiki text that you wrote. Um, let's see. There's a little close-up of it. And uh, by the way, there's also undo and redo. I don't know if you did you notice or not, but like 
on standard Android edit fields you can't undo and redo, so I built that in. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's, that's it. I'm not the most prolific Wikipedia editor, so I don't know, like, these are the syntax bits that I thought would make sense, but if any of you have suggestions for what other stuff to include, I would very much welcome them. Come see me afterwards. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Next is uh, Isara with the uh, responsive monobook uh, skin. Because you all want responsive monobook. Do we? Okay, uh. anyone who uses monobook and um, never wants to let it go. Okay, uh, how do you switch this to mobile? Use that. Okay, so that's responsive mo or responsive monobook. That's his mobile thing. Let me log in. <laughs> eh, it's still broken. Okay, so I was trying to get. Oh, there we go. So. What I basically spent the entire hackathon doing was not actually responsive monobook itself. That was mostly done. What I was trying to do was to get Echo to cooperate with it. So what I wound up doing was basically making the normal badges go away. They're still there. And then um, just making the numbers show up on top of that thing. So yeah. And then you click on that, and then there's just a notifications entry in the personal tools, and that'll just take you to the special page, which... Yeah. So anyway, this is now responsive. It works on mobile. It I don't know how well it works, but it's you could. Start. What? It's a start. Yes. Oh, it is a start. <laughs> From here, we can then go on to vector and every other skin. And I swear, I'll actually start working on timeless soon. Cause yeah, I uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, this exists. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. John, I think your presentation has downloaded. And somehow it should open. There you go. <coughs> you want a mic? Yes, please. So, hello, I'm John. Um, my team just launched um, the page previews tool for Wikipedia. Um, we just focused on Wikipedia because that simplified things a lot. Uh, so today during the hackathon, actually like 30 minutes today, I wanted to show how easy it is to create an API for other projects. So I did Wikidata, um, and I don't trust the Wi-Fi, so I recorded it. Um, so here is in English. Um, you can see just, just very similar return in the summaries, the images. Um, but also so it's also sound, which there shouldn't be. <laughs> I was wondering who was my um, It also works on German and French. There's a bit of localization going on there. Um, so it's possible. If you want to make this happen, talk to me. It's very easy. I think we can do it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That was quick. Uh, let's see. Page. No, that was this one. Uh, Oris to Docker. You can. Uh, it's over there. Thank you. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Oriol. I wanted to talk to tell you about what I've been working on this weekend, which is um, a first take at running ORES on Docker. Um, before that, a little bit of a disclaimer. This is like the very first event at com I come related to Wikimedia, and it's the very first time I work with ORES, so excuse me if I say something foolish. Uh, now, about ORES, a little bit of an overview. So when somebody requests the score for a specific revision, what happens is that this request hits a server, which is the API. That's one service running. Uh, if that's, if, uh, then the, the API will request this, uh, this score to a catch. If it's not catched, it will link you it to a job queue. And then a worker will take care of uh, getting that score processed. So uh, on overview, there are four services running. One is the API, uh, the score catch, the job queue, and a worker. Okay, so the first, let's say, kind of milestone we could talk about was getting all those services running on Docker. 
And with that, what we have is um, actually three containers running. And beyond that, there's like the need of orchestrating them. So on top of that, what I did was having a Docker Compose layer that gets all those containers up and running together and connected. And, uh, all, and all, this setup is actually passing the tests. And Adam told me about like a validation URL that I could use to, to validate that everything is working and it's working. It's actually what I wanted to show you. Um, and that's about it. And the idea of getting it running on Docker Compose is because the SRE guys said on the very first day that they were pushing for, for Kubernetes. So I think that once you have that on Docker Compose, uh, translating it to Kubernetes should be much, much easier. And that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see, we have two presentations left. Uh, one is about Kubernetes, what, why, where, how, and uh, wiki provenance. Uh, John again. Okay, this. I think it's about there. So this time it's about uh, wiki provenance. Uh, what we want to do is, do we have st references for all the statements of uh, on an item. So take, a, take for example, John Sebastian Barr. Okay. So we have got uh, statements and references, but and you, as you can see, there are 253 statements on Barr, but there are only 45 statements that have, been, that have references. So let's see what are these 45 state, uh, reference statements, and you could see out of those 45, 10 belong to P106, which is about pop, uh, occupation of of John Sebastian Barr. And similarly, you have another one, uh, like the seven, I think, which is about the, his date of death. We have got seven references. So we don't have a lot of references for many other items, but, uh, but for some properties, we have got many references. So, so you can also check, for example, uh, what I would like to show here is like you, for software, we have got software same base, 72 statements, but only six of them have references. So let's check the famous uh, uh, Douglas Adams. <laughs> Oops, sorry, this is a keyboard problem. <laughs> uh, okay, 42, yeah. So this is remarkable. So you have got 177 statements, but only 52 reference statements. And, then, and that's so you can also what other thing is you could see how many of them have external identifiers so you have got 75 ex, uh, 76 external identifiers 75 languages talk about them and there are 30 wiki quotes and so on you could see a uh, detail of all other languages so this is right now a uh, work that has been done this weekend and thanks to Dario Daniel Mitchin and uh, Finn from the wiki site team thank you thank you Last but not least. Where's the plus? Where's the plus? <laughs> <laughs> Let's increase this a little bit. Maybe here? The audience has good tips, I know that. Audience, please help. Where's the plus? <laughs> Uh, that, that one probably works. <gasps> but, yeah. Okay. Let me pause this. Please, where is the uh, Windows? Why Windows? <laughs> Let me refresh. Ah, refresh always works. So, I had a session this morning about what is Kubernetes and why we want to go there, and I had a demo scheduled. Then, of course, you, you know about the demo gods? The demo gods are those deities to which you sacrifice something, most often your time and your food. And of course, they did not listen to my prayers and I could not do the demo. So I kind of cheated and I recorded the demo and now it's up on ASCII Cinema for you to see. So here's to hoping. So the idea is that we have uh, a Kubernetes class already running. I cheated and this part is not here because it takes a little bit to start, but we have Graphoid, which is a service and we're now building it in a container. And it's going to be deployed very quickly in a mini kube cluster. There's a Kubernetes cluster that you have locally installed. So as you can see right now, it's running. Uh, it's already on stage on Docker step 34, 35. And it's now watching for changes locally. 
I am just curling the info endpoint. You can see I have there a description that calls overriding my description, changing the file, and changing the description to something else. Um, and let's see how much time it takes to actually get redeployed. You're not going to really like this, but let's see. So back to looking at it, we are at, if I actually, uh, so you can see the timer up there. It started at 4601. Uh, you can see still the old description, but around about now. <laughs> see? Yeah. So that it is. It took us like uh, 15 seconds for this to be fully deployed. I know all of you who edit PHP are going to say, what? This is too much. But this is actually good for getting the thing that will be deployed in production running on your laptop. It's the exact same thing that would be running in production, nothing else. So I think that's a net win. I'm not sure if you agree, but <laughs> thank you all. Thank you. Okay, so that was uh, 32 presentations in uh, an hour and uh, 20 minutes, I think. Uh, thank you, all of the presenters, um, for your flexibility, especially the people that had to make some last-minute adjustments to their plans. Um, I want to thank everyone uh, who tried here to fix the, the technical things. Um, unfortunately, uh, we didn't do it, but we managed to have at least something. Um, and uh, now for the real uh, hackathon closing session, Rachel. Don't worry that uh, it will be uh, very short because uh, we are just uh, out of time. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for all the work uh, you have done and or, uh, for all the work that you will do in the future because we want this hackathon to be, of course, the beginning of many projects, of many collaborations and many efforts uh, together. I'm uh, really happy with, uh, with the projects uh, I've seen, especially all related to multilingual and images that were two of the focus of these hackathons on, of our previous hackathons. And I hope that you have uh, had a very good time here, despite of the problems of uh, issues that haven't been around these whole days. The hackathon is, is not over yet. We have uh, like five hours, no, four or five hours left uh, back in January. You have more food, more beer, uh, more socialized, and more hacking time. And I just want to say uh, thank you. Yes, that was amazing. Um, so just, I know, I know we all want to get out of this room and go back and keep hacking, so we'll keep this short. Uh, just another thank you. Oh, no. uh, okay. Another thank you to the University of Barcelona for hosting us here. They did quite a bit of work uh, behind the scenes, logistically keeping things running. Um, I also want to say about the volunteers of Wikimedia Amical, um, they spent the last three days working really hard, uh, even as far as the details of serving the food themselves or staying up at six in the morning just in case somebody, somebody walks in the room, um, and then dealing with problems as they're uh, reported behind the scenes. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Amical style of working, um, and if you don't know much about the way that Amical works, I would suggest you look it up and learn a little bit. Um, I'm definitely going to integrate some changes that I learned from Amical into my style of working. Um, so yeah, dis despite some of the logistical issues, we managed to have a really, really productive and successful event. Um, over 50 sessions and 90 projects and countless other groups offering help. That's pretty impressive. It's probably the most that I've ever seen at any hackathon by a large amount. Um, so really good job to all of you. Um, on the program side of things, 
I want to say a special thank you to everyone who is involved in the mentoring program, volunteering program, and friendly space team, and everyone else who just volunteered to make this event better. Can we give a round of applause for them? It's the wiki way for when you see a problem to become part of the solution instead of complaining about it. And that's been demonstrated very, very clearly here in an amazing way with these programs. So thank you all for co-creating this event together with us. Um, uh, it's been a very personally powerful for me experience to see all of this in action. Um, Lila spoke about a lot of the newcomers from the university who came into uh, the hackathon and found really good support and a really good experience. So uh, just know that this had a really big impact in the local community too. Um, thank you once again for your flexibility and kind attitude. Uh, remember that there will be uh, food at the hackathon space still working. Um, yes, Laya handpicked all the food herself like really well, yes. Um, and uh, Mostly, uh, we're closing the doors at 10 because we want to let the Amakai volunteers home to their families. They have their jobs to go to in the morning. So, yeah, so we'll, we'll leave by 10. Uh, we'll have a feedback survey sent out. Um, and we have one more thing to show you. Waiting for the text message to let me into my account. Two factor off. <laughs> oh no, well, okay. So um, the next hackathon 2019 will be in Prague. Wikimedia Czech Republic uh, is already working on this hard for you. They put together slides with like very beautiful pictures of the city, as well as their organizing team. Uh, so I will add it to the Etherpad later so you can look at these pictures. Um, they're going to have a full-time uh, person working on this event and a lot of volunteers. Uh, they were here at this event learning from Laya, learning from previous hackathon organizers like Claudia and other people uh, about what they're going to do. Uh, so get in touch with them if you have some ideas and suggestions. And of course, we'll continue the knowledge sharing. So Prague is going to be great. And one more huge round of applause for Laya and Amical.